First of all, Hillary Clinton gave her first interview yesterday in a long, long time, first national interview. She gave it to CNN. You give interviews all the time. You're out there. You're talking extemporaneously. Why do you think Hillary Clinton is not talking? Well, Anderson, she's got a lot to hide. I mean, she gets a subpoena on emails, and she, I mean, from the United States Congress, and she gets rid of the emails, and her server and everything she gone. She said yesterday in the interview, by the way, she didn't get a subpoena. There, there was, there is well, no subpoena. I mean, they said they the issued a subpoena, but you're right. I mean, she handled it like, like, you know, what's going on? How can you do that? She has a lot to hide. She doesn't want to talk to the press. Look, she was the worst secretary of state in the history of the United States. But you used to donate, I mean, you gave a lot of money sure. to her over the years. Because I was a businessman, I guess I still am, but I was a businessman, I was with everybody. Everybody loved me. When I called them, they always treated me well. And that's part of the game. And that's part of what's wrong with this country. Because as a businessman, I could have gotten anything from anybody. And that is part of the problem. Lobbyists, donors, well, special that, interests. Is that why you were donating money to people you donated? Because you donated to Democrats. I think in 2006, sure. you gave 20000 to the Democratic Congressional Campaign Fund. You gave 1000 Democrats thousand. and Republicans. Well, I get along with everybody. You gave 1000 to Republicans. Oh, whatever. But I've campaign. given millions. Now, I've given millions to everybody. So do you give, though, based on principles, or do you give based on who's going to do things for you politically? They all love me. Let's put it that way. They all love me. I'm a very, very, I did very nicely in life. And frankly, you give, and it's part of the problem. And I've, I talk about it all the time, part of the problem. So even though you're doing it, you say it's a problem. Well, I'm saying this. They won't necessarily do what's right for the country. They'll do what's right for their special interest, their donor the lobbyist, et cetera. Not good for the country. But you know when you're going to get on the stage during those debates and, and your Republican challengers are going to say, look, you're all over the place politically. You say you're a conservative Republican. You're giving money to Hillary Clinton, to, uh, Harry Reid, Nancy I Pelosi. I get along with everybody. And that's part of the problem we have so, in the country So you were giving money based on political beliefs. You were giving money based on currying favor, like many people do. People love me. And you know what? I've been very successful. Everybody loves me. Politically, the other thing they're going to say is you're a flip-flopper politically. You say now you're a conservative Republican. Smoking gun goes back to 87 with your registration record. You were Republican, then you were independent, then you were Democrat for eight years, then you were unaffiliated, then you were Republican. Then you, you have to look at what Ronald Reagan did. He, was, he switched around, too. Not so much different. Well, to somebody who says, though, look, you're, you're, the, you're the guy who said you're the stand-up guy, you're a decision-maker, you seem to kind of be indecisive well, you, politically. you do have to understand that I'm in New York City. It's virtually impossible in New York State. If you look, I think it's three to one Democrat to Republican. It's virtually impossible. So as a businessman in New York City, and now all over the world, but as a businessman in New York City, I have to get along with Democrats. If I don't get along with Democrats, I'm sort of like out of business. But were you a Democrat when you said you were a Democrat? Uh, I was a Democrat for a period of time early on, and then I was also an independent, and then I became a Republican. I got to ask you about a couple things in, in the news. Washington Post, as you know, say that some of the workers building this beautiful hotel that you're, you're building down in Washington, D.C., are illegal. They've talked to 15 workers. They said a number of those 15 came here legally yeah. through asylum. They're now legal, but that a number of them did say they're illegal. Isn't it hypocritical for you saying that illegal immigration is killing this country to be employing illegal well, immigrants? I read the story, and by the way, that story does not name any names. I'd love them if they could give us the names, but they said they spoke to one or two and, but they don't name them, and they don't even know if it's true. Well, what, they, what they say is several of the men who hail mostly from El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala have earned U.S. citizenship or legal status through immigration programs targeting Central Americans, fleeing civil wars or natural disasters. Others quietly acknowledge that they remain in the country illegally. They don't they give numbers. They have to give us the names because we have, you know, you many know, illegal, more. Or they're no, not going to no, give no, you names. They have to give us the names. And I have to say this. Uh, we believe so strongly. I hired a very big contractor, one of the most prestigious, one of the best in the world, to build the building. It's their responsibility to make sure they have Doesn't done. Does the book stop with you, though? Uh, it, yes, You're it does. Their oh, absolutely. Uh, we have gone out of our way to make sure that everybody in that building is legal, and we do have some that were that became legal. Maybe. And wait a minute, we have some, many, I think, that became. Frankly, me, you, everybody. I mean, ultimately, we were all sort of in the group of immigrants, right? But 
we have done that to the absolute letter of the law. We're very, very careful on it. But if the Washington Post can go me. there and talk to 15 people and well, find some illegal immigrants... They haven't shown us anything. I wish they would give us some names. We would get them out immediately. You, you must have a guy on the job site. We who, have more than one guy, right. and we, we check it probably more carefully than any job that was ever built. Anderson, you have either 11, anywhere from 11 to 34 million illegal immigrants in this country. They're all over the place. Nobody knows even where they come from. Can you they probably come some from the Middle East. You don't know where they're coming from. We check on that building probably more carefully than anybody that's ever built a building before. And I think from what I heard, and I just checked it this morning because I asked a question because I read the article also, we are absolutely in beautiful, perfect shape. Now, I wish they'd give us the names. We would get rid of them immediately. This isn't the first time, though, this has been an issue. Daily Beast today, there's an article. I don't know if you've seen it. The headline says, they're talking about the building we're sitting in right now. They're saying Trump Tower was built on undocumented immigrant backs. That How many years ago was that? This was, what, Th 75? 35 years 35 ago. 35 years ago. Yeah, they said 35 years ago. But this was a court case. 200 illegal immigrants, Polish workers, guys working for $5. Anderson, I hire a contractor. The contractor then hires a subcontractor. They have people. I don't know. I don't remember. That was so many years ago. 35 years ago, they said we had some this illegal This was a court work. case settled in 1999. You okay, settled with it's them. it's all right. I mean, it's fine. I mean, I remember the case. Frankly, I remember it very well. Uh, we hire contractors. The contractor, very highly prestigious, very good con They go out, hire subcontractors. Sometimes the subcontractors will have people working, but, you know, it's pretty far if, down if the this line. Was, this was 200 Polish workers working without hard hats. Pretty noticeable Anderson, on a union job. When you have to go back 35 years to tell me about something, I think that's pretty pathetic, to be honest with you. Do you think, can you guarantee that you don't have illegal or undocumented workers working for you in hotel projects or various projects? I, I can't guarantee it. How can, I, how can anyone? We have 34 million in the country. I used to hear 11. Now I hear it's 34 million. I can't guarantee anything. But I can say this, we work very hard to make sure that everybody is legal as opposed to illegal. The, there's, as you said, 11, who knows how many millions? 11 million, one nobody figure, knows. nobody knows. Know. Right, nobody way, knows. Most scary of all, our government doesn't know. They don't have an idea. They don't have a clue. What would you do with the ones already here? You've talked about building a, a great wall on the border, for, or at least parts of the border, uh, about being tough. What would you do with the ones I that are already here? I would do something very, very strong. Number one, I wouldn't even think about anything until I built a wall, I, impenetrable. There will be nobody coming into this country illegally. That's number one. Number two, I would get the ones that are criminals, drug dealers, and the people that are forced in by Mexico, and you know exactly what I'm talking about, because Mexico is smarter and sharper and more cunning and, frankly, have much better negotiators than we have. And I would get the ones that are forced in by the country of Mexico into our country, forced in, those people would get out, and they'd get out fast. The rest, I would be looking at very seriously. But I wouldn't. Well, well, you say looking at citizens seriously. Do you? Would there be a pathway to citizenship for? I mean, you're talking about 11 million at the very it's least. Too early for me to say. And when you say citizenship, the most we'd be talking about was legal. But let me just tell you, before I even think about that, we have to build a. We have to build a wall, a real wall, not a wall that people walk through. Okay, you talk about focusing on the criminals, uh, deporting people. There, more people have been deported under Obama than any other president previously. And more people are coming in under Obama by far than more president ever. There's never been an, a, a, an entrance like this, and they're walking in. They're walking right past our patrols. But, but and the actually, patrols arrests on the border have it. gone up significantly. Uh, I can just say this. More people are in this country right now illegally than ever before. I will build a better wall, and I'll build it for cheaper, and Mexico will pay, if that's your next question. Yeah, how do you get Mexico to because pay? Because they are ripping us left and right. But Mexico. How do you make By the pay? way, I love the Mexican people. Many Mexican people work for me. Many Mexico people I do business with, they purchase things for me, like apartments, et cetera, et cetera. I have great relationships with Mexico and with the Mexican people. I love the Mexican people. I love their spirit. But, but let me let pay? me just tell you. Mexico is making an absolute fortune because the trade deals with the United States are phenomenal for them and horrible for us. They're taking our jobs, they're building factories, warehouses, they're building things that we're not even thinking so about. So you say you renegotiate trade deals and in that put in a price for the wall? Absolutely. And they will do it. And I've watched these very stupid pundits say, you 
can't do that. Of course you can do that. Mexico's making, I can do it. By the way, Hillary can't do it. Jeb can't do it. These people that are running, most of them can't do it. Maybe a couple of them. I actually have a respect for a couple of them. But Hillary cannot do it. I guarantee you that. Jeb Bush cannot do it. I can do it easy. Mexico is making a fortune off the United States. They will pay for that wall, believe me.